I'm back, finally. I filmed something on Sunday and I was thinking, oh, I gotta finish that video. I can't start a new video before I finish that video, but I didn't finish that video, so I just kept on not filming. Um, and beyond that, Monday was a nightmare. One of the worst freakouts I've had in a very long time, and it happened at work, directed at my supervisor and my manager. Got real angry, made everybody uncomfortable. It's Saturday and it's actually almost 3 p.m. and I've just woken up. So I'm gonna stretch and then I'll tell you what happened. I started doing my laundry, which is why I changed shirts. I stretched, I took my medicine, I put pictures on my blog for an hour, and now I'm gonna tell you what happened. So I was in a meeting with my supervisor and my manager. And this was the follow-up meeting about them reaching out to HR to see what kind of accommodations I could get for my disability. And basically they told me, so the accommodation that I've had in place, an unofficial accommodation, is that if I'm not feeling well because of my disability, I can use my PTO pretty much whenever I want. I can use it in a chunk of two hours here, I can take the rest of the day off here, so long as I'm responsible about uh, letting people know if I'm gonna be gone, if I'm going to miss any meetings or like anything like that, which like I never do. I, I can really hold it together, you know, very well, but sometimes it's just so miserable to work that, like, I have to go. And ironically, in this meeting, um, I really demonstrated that. So they told me, basically, that HR told them that I thought that I was maybe I had a chance of getting extra PTO because I'm using so much of my PTO as sick time or that I could be given like an extra half hour paid break in the middle of the day, you know, something like that, something to help me out. But instead what they told me is that my option is that I can go through a third party company and apply with them to be able to legally use the accommodation that I'm already using, which is using my PTO when I'm not feeling well, right? Um, and that otherwise, uh, if I don't do that, then the accommodation that I already have is in danger of uh, getting me fired because I'm a full-time employee and I, I'm given a full-time employee's amount of work. And if I am not doing 40 hours of work a week, then they have to question my performance. And if I am not, you know, if I'm not a full-time employee, then they need a full-time employee in my job. So going through this third party would protect my job against being fired for the accommodation that I am already using, the unofficial accommodation that has not been approved by HR or anything. It's just an agreement that I have with my boss and stuff. So for reasons that I'll explain, this conversation triggered my PTSD really badly. <laughs> And um, I, I was so unprofessional. I was like, so what you're saying basically is that they're giving me nothing and if I don't do this, then I'm gonna get fired? And I was like, I don't know why the two of you led me to believe that this was gonna help me. I feel completely misled about what this conversation was gonna be about. And I was like, I, I keep my camera on during meetings at work because it helps me with my ADHD when I feel like there's someone looking at me, right? It's called body doubling. And I was so visibly, I like infuriated, like just fuming and upset and like my my chin was wobbling and I was like very obviously um about to cry I even said like listen guys I'm feeling really emotional right now we might have to continue this conversation later and then I just kept I just kept uh, just being really really angry right and uh, eventually I had to turn off my camera because I started sobbing and um, it was very awkward for everyone involved and like my manager had to end the meeting early, say sorry, you know, that this was a difficult conversation, it had to be done and I'm, I'm just gonna end the meeting now because I can see that emotions are really high. <sighs> so I logged off for the rest of the day and I cried from 4.30 p.m. until 1.30 a.m. Like, by the end of the night, 
was feeling suicidal, felt like my life is so bad, it's so difficult dealing with my symptoms that I honestly don't know if I want to live anymore because my life is bad and it's really hard and I can't get any help and blah 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 So it was that bad. It was that upsetting to me. And of course, that emotion did not match the situation. I woke up the next morning. First of all, I'm gonna show you a pic some pictures of my face that I took the next morning just to show you like how swollen and crazy my face looked the next day from crying that long. And in the morning, I, ha I immediately gained some clarity about what had happened. One, this news that I got about HR was delivered to me in a respectful way. Two, my manager and my supervisor are both my friends. And I know that I'm falling for the lies of capitalism, but I do. I have a good personal relationship with both of these people. We have hung out a bunch of times outside of work. I really enjoy both of them. I think they're good people and I know that they care about me. Go ahead, call me a sucker. Go on, leave a comment. Say, Lindy, you're a sucker for believing your boss cares about you. Three, even though I consider these people to be very friendly, they are still my bosses and they don't have control over what HR says. They don't have control over that our need to justify our headcount to their higher ups. They don't make the rules. And sometimes you, they have to be my boss and they have to tell me things that I don't like. And I definitely don't think that they were at all anticipating the reaction I was going to have. These people are not my enemies. They're literally just doing their job and they care about me. Um, then I was like, okay, why did I, you know, why did I freak out so hard? Obviously I had some sort of PTSD flashback and because that is just so not normal, you know? <laughs> you know, I have a complex PTSD from being abused as a child. So a lot of my triggers are childlike. They are focused around thing, like things in my childhood, right? So the things that were triggering me about this were a sense that I'm in pain and I'm asking for help and the grown-ups aren't helping me or I need help and I'm asking for help and instead of getting help, I'm being punished for asking for it. I'm weird and I can't keep up with other people and that makes me bad or I'm in pain and people, people are accusing me of faking it. You know, those are all feelings I had in my youth that are, that, you know, from being abused in my home, trying to, you know, God forbid, reach out to my parents to have them try and help me deal with these feelings I was having, or even um, going to people outside of my family. I was the truth teller in my family, so I would talk to my aunts and uncles, I would talk to my grandparents, I would talk to other adults, just basically any adult I could get around, I would like tell them about, you know, some of the struggles that I was having. I don't remember particularly what I would say, but it kind of always ended with like my mom finding out that I had talked to someone and like telling me that I was, uh, you know, an ungrateful brat, that I was lying, that I was just trying to poison people against her, and that if I hate her so much, she'll send me to someone who wants me. Like, that's, that's pretty much the core of what it was that triggered my PTSD. And I feel very vulnerable sharing um, my troubles at work because it is this condition that people are aware of but I don't know what the appropriate amount of sharing of my disorder looks like at work like I will tell I will tell some things to some people I trust but no one is getting the full picture there so I also am feeling like you know what I'm saying to them about how I just I can't function sometimes and I I, and it's often enough, it's like on a daily basis, all I do is symptom management. And I, and working a full-time job on top of that, I, I can't do it. 
I can't do it without some accommodations. You know, I can't do that and have a life worth living without being able to say, okay, I'm completely miserable. I cannot focus. I am just going to log out of work and lay down for a minute. If I can't do that, then it just increases my suffering in my life. But like, how do they know that? Because I'm not telling them that. So anyway, so I felt bad for how I acted. And also I felt a little bit like, ooh, Ooh, girl, those are, those are the people who can decide whether or not you work here or not. So the next morning on Tuesday, I contacted HR myself. They'd given me an HR representative that I could contact if I wanted to talk more about this. And she gave me, uh, she basically told me almost the same thing, which is that I can go through this third party company and yes, have protected medical leave time off during the day. Um, or... She also gave me another option, which is that I could go through my company and they have a, a, like the HR department works with the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, of which I obviously fall under for multiple reasons. Just a quick rundown for anyone who's not familiar, I have complex PTSD, I have ADHD, I have substance use disorder, I have an eating disorder, I have body dysmorphic disorder, I have depression, I have generalized anxiety disorder. It's all on record with my doctor. It's not like I can't prove this. But yeah, I mean, I obviously fall under the disabled, the, the umbrella of disability covered under the ADA, right? So my other option is that I could go through my job and they work with the ADA and that I could, instead of doing like this PTO trade-off where I'm like, you know, having chunks of time off because I'm having symptoms, I could also reduce the number of hours I'm working on like a semi-permanent basis. Like I could go down to 20 or 35 or 30 hours a week, which is not income protected. So it would be a quarter pay cut basically. So anyway, I went through the day as best as I could. And then I pulled my boss and my manager aside after a meeting later and I sat down with them and I was like, I'm sorry. I was super triggered by this meeting. I told them why, which is more than I usually share. And I, th I just think it's interesting that it happened to be this particular conversation where I completely lost it in front of them in a way that I don't think I have done except maybe one time before where I just closed my laptop and stood up and left a meeting one time, but that was a long time ago. And I apologized because my behavior affects other people. It doesn't hurt me to apologize when I am um, out of line, even if I am out of line because of my mental illnesses. This is just something that I have come to accept about myself and about the world, which, which is that if I hurt or upset people or act inappropriately, um, I can't just say, well, that's my mental illness. I actually need to apologize and um, mean it because I really don't wanna, I don't wanna upset people. And I don't wanna put people in uncomfortable positions. And my reaction to that situation was not appropriate. I take my job and my career very seriously and I wanna be a professional at all times. So then I talked with my therapist about my options the next day and I had already come up with a plan. And just to be clear, I'm probably cursing it by talking about it, but this is what I'm gonna request from HR. I have not requested it yet. This is speculation only, but this is what I want. I feel like in the past six months, a year or something like that, when I talk to people at work, my friends, my family, you know, people, new people that I'm meeting, I feel like I'm always talking about being mentally ill. Even on here, think about it. How many of my videos are just about me being mentally ill and trying to cope with it, right? It's like, it seems like I'm just always talking about this with other people. And I, I feel like I am always like telegraphing this message to other people that I am sick, I am struggling, and I need help. I think that with the severity of the daily symptoms that I am having and the whole complex of disorders that I have, that one hour of talk therapy a week is not enough medical treatment. I have, I take my pills too. I'm very faithful to taking all of my medication, but I am struggling 
to live a life that is worth living. And so what I, and I talked to my therapist about this, what I'm gonna request from HR is that I want to drop down to a 30 hour a week position. At 30 hours, I would still get to keep my benefits, but it would be a one quarter pay cut. Luckily, I live well within my means and I have been saving money for almost a year. I've been saving a third of every paycheck for almost a year. So I have a, a comfortable safety net in a savings account. So I think that financially it wouldn't be great, but I could do it. And with those extra 10 hours a week, I want to seek additional medical help for myself. I want to get into regular EMDR appointments weekly um, and I want to have a a DBT program too, where I learn coping skills and how to deal with overwhelming emotions. And so I'm envisioning instead of one hour of therapy a week, I'm gonna have three appointments a week, talk therapy, EMDR, and DBT. And I have tried to seek out this kind of help in the past and Working has been a direct impediment to me seeking out additional help. Like for example, last year I was diagnosed with an eating disorder and I was recommended to an eating disorder clinic, right? Um, but doctors operate Monday through Friday during business hours. So I had to, it was twice a week I had to go to this clinic. I had to drive out to St. Louis Park and go to this place called Melrose Melrose Eating Disorder Clinic or whatever. And um, I ultimately I left because I didn't think that the program was right for me. But even if it wasn't exactly right for me, the added burden of having to leave my job in the middle of the day for like two, two and a half hours, go talk with somebody about things I find really upsetting, you know, get back home, calm myself down, and then, and then I have to log back into work, finish out my work day, and then work an additional two, two and a half hours into the evening to make up the time that was lost. Or I could, I could use my PTO for that, but that means that I'm getting behind in my work. And to do that twice a week, it, I can't finish out a regular work week usually with one one hour talk therapy appointment, much less throw another two in there, right? Or uh, EMDR, EMDR uh, therapy. I was doing EMDR therapy for a long time because my doctor happened to have an, an open slot at like 4 p.m. on Fridays, right? And that's like, that's a unicorn spot. Like you do not get that slot. Usually these doctors, there's a waiting list. I was on a waiting list for over a year to see this doctor. Um, and then they have one or maybe two time slots that you can choose from. And it just so happened I got this sweet time slot and it sucked because I had to give up my Friday night every week. Because EMDR is, you go in and it's, it's trauma memory reprocessing. So I have to go in uh, intentionally trigger the shit out of my PTSD by talking about trauma memories over and over again so that I can fully process out all of the grief and the anger and um, you know all the different ways that this issue that this particular incident has like branched out into different parts of my life um, so it's like um, <laughs> You know, it, so it's really, really upsetting, very difficult to recover from. Um, one of those like hard but necessary things you have to do to heal from PTSD, right? But then the doctor with the four o'clock Friday spot, spot left the practice and I got sent to another doctor whose only open spot was at 10 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. So, in, so if I want to keep on doing this therapy that is like something that's going to help heal my PTSD, I have to be willing to log off at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, um, get, you know, just talk about like being molested for an hour, like fully allowing myself to feel all of the emotions that are like built up about that, right? And like all the ways it's impacted me throughout my life and you know just allow my PTSD to become fully activated right then I have to uh, calm down enough to return to work and then work the rest of the day and an extra hour and a half two hours into the evening you know 
So my job has directly stopped me from seeking additional Medicare or medical help for myself and requesting a reduced schedule to seek medical care for your disability. It seems to me like that is textbook what the ADA should cover. So I talked to my doctor about that uh, and she completely agrees. Uh, everyone I've talked to about it uh, in my life, which is like my, my best friend, Michael, my two sisters and my therapist, they're all like, yeah, that sounds, uh, that is an incredible plan, Lindy. Anyway, and my, my therapist in particular, who is going to have to like provide medical records and evidence to my job, was like, I think that you are an ideal candidate for this kind of accommodation because I am honest, Har working hard is at probably the top of my personal values list. And I don't just mean paid work. I mean working hard in every part of my life, right? I'm highly insightful as a person and I always follow through with the treatments I say I'm going to pursue and I always follow doctor's orders. So if I'm able to get this accommodation, I'm going to do exactly what I just said I was going to do. And now that I've thought of it, I feel like this is maybe the only way forward for me because I have to be able to have a life that's worth living. The way I'm living now where all I do is work and, and fail at it and then do symptom management and fail at that too, it's unacceptable and I need to change something. Okay, now it's 7.15. I just finished a couple hours of work because, well, I had to take time off earlier this week to be upset. Um, it's Saturday, by the way. I don't know if I've mentioned that. Anyhow, um, it's 7.15 p.m. and I actually have not eaten one single thing today, so I'm going to work on that. Okay, so I've got some eggs sought with uh, pork sausage and a little bit of salsa, an apple, a couple mini sweet peppers, uh, carrots, celery, and then a protein shake. I ate my food and I just edited this video, so I probably shouldn't make it any longer now that I see how long it is. Uh, but thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!